I hate this question. This is an old one. This was on the old version of the SAT on one of the main Blue Book practice tests back before the SAT went digital. So I taught this question a lot for that old test. And it's not, there's no real great way to do it. Basically, you just need to kind of try things, in my opinion. Some people might be able to look at this situation, come up with this equation on their own. But I think that's, that's hard for a lot of people. So we're going to use the same strategy we always use. Uh, we have equations in the choices. So I would love to have some points, right? So plug points into equations. The challenge here is understanding what the points should be. So to kind of help you with that, let's let's kind of think about what they're telling us, right? So the table bug is the typical amounts of energy per gram expressed in both food calories and kilojoules of the three macronutrients in food. If the 180 food calories in a granola bar come entirely from P grams of protein, F grams of fat, and C grams of carbohydrates, which of the following expresses F in terms of P and C? So right off the bat, I'm just going to tell you we don't need this. Uh, there was another part to this question on the old test, and you needed that for that part, but you don't need it for this part. So it's just about the, the number of calories, and um, it's notice calories per gram. So if we really simplify this granola bar, we can start to understand what's happening, right? So let's pretend that this granola bar that's 180 calories is purely fat, right? It's just a big hunk of slippery fat, disgusting. So what would happen then, right? Well, then the P would be zero and the C would be zero, right? There's no protein, there's no carbs. So if we plug that in uh, without doing all the math, you can see what's gonna happen, right? Is the zero plus zero is gonna basically zero out the last term. And so we're gonna be left with just 20. So we would get that F is 20. Now, what is where does that come from? What does that mean? Because remember, they said there's 180 food calories. So how are we getting from 20 to 180? Well, that's because we're changing units, right? The 20 is the number of grams, and that's why I emphasize that as I read. And so if there's 20 grams of fat, and each gram of fat is nine calories, right? 20 times nine is the 180. So that's how all this stuff fits together. And if you understand that, then you can probably build this equation yourself and rearrange it, and I'll sh I can show you that at the end, but, but let's continue with this process here, because again, I, I don't think most people are gonna understand this story intuitively. But hopefully by forcing yourself to plug points into equations, you kind of start to peel away the, the mystery here and, and get to something. So obviously we can't use zero uh, protein and carbs because then we're not gonna understand which choice is right. All the choices would fit. So we need a new situation, but I understand kind of how I wanna think about it. Let's make it so that all of this, this granola bar is protein, right? So Let's make the C equal to zero and the F equal to zero. And that means now if it's all protein, we can kind of work it backwards, right? So there's it's four calories per gram of protein. So if I take my 180 and I divide it by four, that's going to be 45. So that means there's 45 grams of protein. And that's all that's in this disgusting granola bar, okay? So... If I put 45 in for P, I should get zero out, right? Because now I have three points that I'm plugging into these equations, and in theory, it should create a, a, a good result. So let's let's do it with, with these choices. So 20 plus 4 ninths of 45 plus zero. So I'll, I'll skip some of these steps eventually, but that's supposed to equal zero, right? Because that's the F, so that's supposed to equal zero. So what is 4 ninths? 4 ninths times 45 is 20. So this is telling me, if I rearrange this, that zero is equal to 20 plus 20. It's not. So this equation doesn't work. I might not know why, but I don't care why. It doesn't work. Hopefully that makes sense. This is a good example of a place where if you don't quite know what I just did, you might want to rewind a little bit and kind of re-listen to that other part because I'm, I'm literally just coming up with these numbers and putting them in, and now it's just robot time. Let's just plug things in and see what happens. I'm not thinking hard, I'm, I've done the thinking part. So this part is easy if we understood the thinking part. Let's continue down the line. Um, <clears throat> so this is gonna be that zero is 20 minus four ninths of 45. Well, we already said that four ninths of 45 is 20. So this is gonna check out, right? This is gonna give me zero equals 20 minus 20. So that works, that could be the answer. But same thing can happen now with uh, a couple other choices, right? This is going to be 20 minus 20 because it's four ninths of uh, 45 again, and that'll work. And then this, though, will be zero equals 20 plus nine fourths of 45 plus zero, right? So 
I could do the math, but already I know there's a plus. So that's not going to work. Plus nine fourths of 45 is going to be bigger than 45. So this isn't going to work either. This isn't going to give me the zero that I want. So just like that, we're down to two choices. Now I might say, well, we did zero fat. We did, you know, or we did uh, all fat. We did all protein. Why don't we do all carbs and see what happens, right? So let's do zero for the protein. Let's do uh, zero for the fat. And since carbs are basically the same as protein, I don't need to really do the math again. This is also going to be 45 grams of carbohydrates. So hopefully that works with the two choices we have left, right? So this is going to be 20 minus four ninths of, now zero is P plus 45. So it's still four ninths of 45. So this is still 20 minus 20, which is still the zero fat that we want. However, if we did that in choice C, we'd have 20 minus four ninths of zero minus 45. So those two negatives there are going to make a positive. So this is going to become 20 plus 20, and that proves it wrong and proves B right. And that is the answer after a lot of annoying work. So I, I will admit, this is not the most efficient way to do this, but when I do stuff like plug points and equations, it's not because I'm interested in the most efficient way. I'm looking at a question and thinking most of the people who look at this will not know what to do. They won't have any place to start. They will have no idea what's even being said. So hopefully by giving them this kind of longer explanation, they at least have a chance of, you at least have a chance of getting it right at some point, right? And, and maybe that's not a good use of your time. Maybe this is the question you save for last. But if something like this is the last question in the first module, I would want you to spend those seven or 10 minutes that you got left over in that first module to, to force your way to an answer here. Do not give up on something like this. If you've got the time, you can get it with just brute force. Let's look at the algebra solution though. Basically, we have to understand the idea of rates because uh, P, F, and uh, C are all the numbers of grams. And since these numbers here in the chart are giving us the rate, the number of calories per gram, we can multiply. So we know that 180 uh, will come from four calories per gram of protein plus nine calories per gram of fat plus four calories per gram of carbs. And that is a total of 180. So notice we're doing some of the same math we did when we were picking numbers is we're, we're doing multiplication here. Uh, normally we would have divided by the, the 180 by the number, the four, the nine. And because we only, we had zeroed out two of our variables, we were able to do that very simply. But here we've got three variables and, and we can't do that as easily. So we're gonna need to do some annoying algebra to get there. But at least now I can kind of see a plan is I need to get F alone. So uh, let's ignore the rest of the story and let's just do the algebra, right? So we're gonna minus four P, minus 4c. So let's do that on this side, minus 4p, minus 4c. We get 9f is equal to 180 minus 4p minus 4c. Then we're dividing by 9, right? Let's get f alone. But let's do it like this instead of doing the 9 over underneath everything, right? Let's, let's do the 9 separately because that's kind of how it looks like these answer choices are set up. So that gives me f, 180 divided by 9 is 20. So there's that part minus four ninths P minus four ninths C. So to make this look like this, we should factor out four ninths. And that this is where we could still mess up. Even if we understood this very, very confidently, if we, if we factor out negative four ninths, it's going to become P plus C, right? Not P minus C, but if we thought it was P minus C, that's where choice C would come from. And, and so uh, that's it. That's choice B, right? It's the same thing. And that certainly that was quicker. Um, but I understood what I was doing. And if you don't, how are you going to even make the equation to start, right? It's, it's much harder. And even if you make that equation and do the algebra, you do have a chance of losing this negative. And, and the choices would make us very, very nervous about that. And then hopefully you'd be paying more attention to that as you went through. But uh, the thing with algebra is it's much harder to catch a mistake. So I don't know, maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe this solution, this algebra solution in purple is kind of easy and intuitive for many of you. Great, awesome. But I'm speaking from experience. No matter how, what kind of level the student was who I taught this question to, it, it, it never really made sense, no matter what I even told them. So the algebra didn't make sense. The plug points and equations felt too tedious for them to do, but they kind of got it. 
Uh, but this was just not a question I enjoyed teaching like on the old practice tests because everyone got it wrong. And so most of the time I would just be like, yeah, don't worry about it. And I do think to a certain extent for many of you on the hard math module, there's going to be one or two questions where it's just like, eh, don't worry about it. Do other stuff, spend your time where you're going to get the most points and maximize the score that way. 